This video will go through a short introduction to time series data, looking at how we construct and how we describe trends. So firstly, what is time series? So what do we mean when we say time series data? Time series is a special kind of bivariate data where both of the variables are numerical. Time or a unit of time is the explanatory variable. So we might be measuring something in terms of days, weeks, months, years, um, usually in those sorts of time frames. It's a special type though, because there's only one response recorded for every time period. So we call that um, similar to a one-to-one -one function. And we've got a couple of examples here. So the first one here, there's no units attached to those um, time periods along the explanatory variable, but you can see there's this one point for each um, in the response variable. And because there is only one point, we tend to join those dots together, join the points together so that we can see any patterns or trends more clearly. The second graph here is um, another way of displaying the time series data. It's using columns instead of points. Um, and this is useful when you've got a, a very large set of data, but in further maths, we tend to do just dot and line graphs. You'll also notice there, there is that seven day average. Um, we will talk about that further on in the topic, which is a method of smoothing data. So you get a better idea of what's happening overall generally in the data rather than each individual time period. So once we have some time series data and we've constructed a plot for that, what we're wanting to do is to describe any trends that we are seeing. So a little bit different to scatter plots, what we've done previously. We've got a few new words in our vocabulary here when we're describing. So the first one is trend. Do we see a general trend in the data? Is it generally increasing or decreasing over time? Now that doesn't mean that there is also some fluctuations in the data. So you can see from the two examples here, if we were to take the one on the right, we can see that generally speaking, it is decreasing over time. So it's that idea again of a band of data, um, not necessarily a perfect straight line. So similar to what we think about when we're talking about direction in our um, scatter plots. Again, same with this one at the bottom left here. We generally see we have an upward trend, so that would be an increasing. Now notice that we don't use the word positive or negative, we use increasing and decreasing trends for time series data. Once we've established whether there is an increasing or decreasing trend, the next thing that we are looking for are patterns. So is there a repeated pattern within your data set? When we talk about patterns, we tend to talk about the period, which is a length of time between the peaks. So if I'm looking at a particular time series plot, I'm looking to see is, when I look at the peak, so the maximum of each little cycle, um, is there a regular or irregular gap in between? And then it, we take it from there, if we can see that there are regular gap or regular spaces between those peaks, um, we then think about, well, what time frame are they happening over? And this is where it all depends on what the unit of time is. And it can change depending on whether I'm measuring my data in units of years versus days versus months, it can all um, change depending on whether what those units are as to whether we have a cycle or a seasonal pattern. So firstly, let's think about the period. If I look at the first example here, and I know the scale is a little bit small, but we can see that first peak is at time unit four, the second one is at eight, and then at 12. So we have a regular interval here between those peaks, okay? Every four units of time, we see that peak. And we can see in between, it's following a similar pattern. Okay, after the first peak, it drops back down and then slowly increases again. Drops down, slowly increases again. So we're seeing a regular pattern there. Now, if this EV is years, so let's say that first example, we said the time period is being measured in units of, of each year. That would tell me that I have a cycle 
in this um, set of data because that regular pattern, okay, so it's a regular period length, is occurring over a pattern or over a period of more than one year. So in this case, it's happening every four years, my pattern starts again or my period starts again. So that means this, in this particular one, I have a cycle. In this second one though, let's say that this data is measured um, weekly, okay? So my time period there is in units of weeks. So again, the first thing I want to check is, am I noticing a pattern, a repeated um, up and down movement? I check the peaks, so here I have these peaks. This is at week one, at week six, at week 12, and at week 17. So again, actually that one might be 13. Um, and of course 18. So here we have a gap of five, five, five. Now they don't have to be exactly the same. So if it's five, then four, then five again, that would be um, close enough. Whereas if we have a gap of four weeks and then 10 weeks and then two weeks, we're not having a regular pattern there. So here we're satisfied that we have a regular pattern. We're seeing it's following the same sort of loop each time, the same um, pattern. But this time, those regular period lengths are less than 12 months. So that means in this case, we have seasonal data. Now seasonal data, we tend to think of that word seasonal triggers for us summer, autumn, winter, spring. And sometimes it is about the seasons of the weather patterns in our actual year. But seasons can be monthly, weekly or daily cycles. Okay, so a season is just a special type of a cycle. A cycle is a word that we use to describe that we are seeing that regular pattern. Other things that we can see in our time series data are either outliers or what we call structural change. And so outliers occur much like in the rest of our um, data that we've looked at in, in our scatter plots, when the regular set of data is following one pattern and then you have something that is out of the ordinary. So here we have some data that is bouncing along sort of between that 12 to 16, 17 mark on the scale, but then we have this one data point at time period 10 that it's dropped all the way down to three. So that would be an outlier. It's outside the normal band or the normal pattern of the data. Structural change though, is where you see you've got one pattern happening. So in this example, we've got a set of data that is, again is bouncing along, maybe with this little cycle in it, maybe not, maybe with an upward trend or a downward trend, maybe not. But we've got this little set of data bouncing along and then something happens and the data either drops or increases suddenly and then the pattern sort of resettles and begins again or it stabilizes and so here between time point nine and time point ten we have had a structural change so that might be um, a particular environmental incident. So often we'll see the impact of natural disasters on the stock market or many, many different things like that. Or even think about, um, you know, cars, the traffic on the road um, pre-COVID and then during lockdown. So we would have had a dramatic shift in the numbers, but then it would have stabilised again over that period of time at its new normal. Um, so that is what we call structural change. The final descriptor is random variation, also known as irregular fluctuations. So this word fluctuations means that we're talking about those little zigzaggy up and down uh, movements in the data. And we can have irregular fluctuations that occur within a general upward or downward trend or within a cycle or seasonal period. Or we can have irregular fluctuations that just mean our time series plot looks kind of random. There's no pattern at all. So this first example on the left here would be that irregular fluctuation where nothing else is occurring. There's no upward or downward trend. There's no real regular pattern um, to any peaks there. 
and it's just an irregular fluctuation or random variation. The one on the right here though, we can see we've got potentially um, between those peaks, a nice even gap of about um, five or so, five or six um, units of time. But in between that peak each time, the data is doing different things. So sometimes it's just going up nicely, sometimes it's up and then down. There is that sort of irregular pattern to what's happening in between the peaks. Um, so what you're looking for each time when you're describing time series data, firstly you're looking for is there a general trend? So is there a general upward or downward trend? And then the next step is to look at is there a, a regular cycle? Is there a regular period, time period between the peaks? And then finally you're looking at what's happening between the peaks. Is it um, a nice standard pattern or is it an irregular fluctuation that's happening there? And so it's important to consider all three things, particularly when you are going through multiple choice questions. Okay, so the final little, little snapshot here is how do we construct time series uh, plots? Quite often we're given data that isn't labelled um, with the time periods as a numerical value. So the very first thing we need to consider is we are putting it in order of time. So we need to actually number off our time periods. So what we, what we mean by that is giving our time um, periods a code so that we can turn it into numerical data. So if we look at the example here, we've got the total rainfall in millimetres for each season from the summer of 2017 to the autumn of 2019 in the table below. And we want to construct a time series plot on our calculator and also just complete the last two points on the graph below. So before we can put this in our calculator and before we can match it up with what's happening on the plot below, we actually want to look at this time data here and give it a number. So starting with the first time period, we'll say that that's one and then simply numbering through with as many values as we've got there, so up to 10. And so sometimes in the question, they'll actually notify you or remind you that summer of 2017 equals time period one. And so it's, that becomes important later on in this topic when we're starting to make predictions and having to refer back to a worded time period and matching that to a numerical value on our plot or in our data. So what we'll do now um, is we'll have a look at this graph in our calculator and then we'll come back and plot those last two points. Okay, so in our calculator, it's the same as entering any other bivariate data. Here I've got our time using the numerical values for the time code and then our rainfall, just as they were given in, um, in our table there. And so when we wanna construct a plot, a time series plot, same as what we would do normally for a um, scatter plot. And so in our data and statistics page, then we wanna pick up our variables. So picking up um, time as our EV, rainfall as our RV. And at the moment, that's giving us just the standard scatter plot. To turn that into our time series plot with the lines, if we go into our menu and plot type, we can pick up that number six XY line plot and that will just connect those dots for us. So it looks much more like what we've got on our page. So that is um, constructing on our um, calculator. We also need to know how to actually draw onto a plot. More and more, we are drawing just a couple of points from the data. So we'll Go back now to our scatter plot and finish that one off. And so to complete this plot, we just need to put in the final two um, points here. So for the summer and autumn of 2019. So at time period nine, we have a rainfall of 132. And so being as accurate as we can, we'll put our point on our graph. And time period 10, autumn, 150 millimetres. Pop those two on and then with a ruler connecting those two points and we've completed that graph. Now if we needed to describe this data, I know it hasn't asked us to here, but to describe, remember first thing we're looking for any general trends. So look at the peak, look at the minimums 
and we can see in this particular example we are we haven't got a third one but we can maybe assume based on the minimums as well that we are decreasing so we have a decreasing trend we can also see that these uh, peaks or the minimum values as well are a regular time period apart and that time period is within 12 months remember 12 months or less so we could say we have seasonal variation in between those time periods from the data we can see we are happy that there would be a regular pattern so in between the minimums coming up dropping back down, increasing again to our peak, dropping back down, increasing again. So we do have that regular pattern there. So there is no reason to say anything else. We can just say we have a decreasing trend with seasonal variation. Okay, so that's our small intro into time theories. Um, in the next section, we'll start looking at the idea of smoothing our data before then going on to making predictions.